my dear students radiology and you know the significance of radiology in your neat pg examinations basically radiology happens to be a minor subject but you get a lot many questions from different branches like surgery like medicine and the clinical correlations of these questions and that amounts to the fact that there are many questions asked from radiology now with the advent of the new type of examination pattern for your neat pg or let it be next examinations ahead you will be seeing a bigger or a higher jump towards the clinically oriented and image based questions asked in your forthcoming examinations so today's topic moving to the board we can see image based questions and especially radiology having a look at question number 1 i would like to have your kind attention and concentration in reading these questions very carefully now this describes a patient with a chronic headache vomiting visual disturbance seizures hypopituitarism polyuria galactoria and amenorrhea and ct is shown and the most likely cause is pituitary tumor cerebellar tumor posterior cranial fossa tumor and midline tumor of the vermis so different anatomic or surgical locations given and you have to come or arrive at a diagnosis now as far as this clinical picture is concerned you can see that there's a lesion and the lesion is shown over here on the board at a point where i am drawing my cursor so the cursor indicates a region and as you will be well aware from your radiographic knowledge that this is the area of the cella tersica and near the cella tersica there is the optic chiasma and what happens this happens to be the region of the pituitary and most likely answer about this as far as even the image itself is concerned is a pituitary growth a pituitary tumor within the region of the cella tersica and you can see that these tumors clinically present with headache vomiting and visual disturbance now visual disturbance would be in the form of bitemporal hemianopia characteristically so the typical characteristic visual disturbance do not mentioned in the question but for your knowledge and may be asked ahead that bitemporal hemianopia is a peculiar manifestation of pituitary tumors and among the pituitary tumors prolactinomas happen to be very common and now important fact is already given in the question head ache vomiting visual disturbances galactoria and amenorrhea especially in case of females so the correct diagnosis is pituitary tumor and you have to remember in addition to this that pituitary tumors can occur in association with multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1 and carney complex and mccune albright syndrome so pituitary tumors you have to remember a very high yield question very frequently asked and examiner's favorite so a combination of headache bitemporal hemianopia especially in females with galactoria and amenorrhea and you must also know that we use bromocriptin cabergoline in the initial stages the micro adenomas are less than 1 cm in size and greater than 1 cm in size qualify as macro adenomas and there can be the surgical approaches the transsynoidal approach the transfrontal approach and different other approaches but more or less this is what you should know about pituitary tumors so over here the correct option is option 1 along with some of the necessary details i mentioned so i hope that you will be remembering these points very nicely moving to question number 2 uh, this assumes a elderly patient 
the generalized fatigue, weight loss, bleeding per rectum. And on examination, he has got scleral ictus and history of alcohol consumption. Hemoglobin is low, anemic, serum bilirubin is 4.5, and CT scan is shown. Now, if you can have a look at the CT, the CT scan of the abdomen is shown, and this is the area of the liver. And you can see, if you just focus on the liver, you can see certain lesions. Now, the most likely diagnosis is liver cancer, angiosarcoma liver, liver cyst, or metastatic lesions. Now, to arrive at a diagnosis, or to arrive at the conclusion or answer of this question, we have to go a brief into the history and also have a knowledge about the radiological anatomy or the radiographic features. Now, there are multiple points which are mentioned over here. The elderly patient, history of alcohol consumption, scleral ictus, low hemoglobin, and these tend to be usually a feature of malignancies of the gut, especially the colorectal malignancies. And as far as the liver malignancies are concerned, we have the primary liver tumors, we have the secondary liver tumors, and you have to remember that hepatic metastases are frequent and out of the four options mentioned, a liver cancer, which might be a primary liver cancer, we rule it out. Angiosarcoma liver, nothing to suggest a specific condition. Liver cyst, hydrated cyst, or any other cyst. The diagram shows multiple nodules in the liver, which you can see over here in this region. And these are most likely, as far as their appearance is concerned, liver metastasis, multiple liver metastasis. And you have to remember that the metastasis to the liver are very common from GIT, especially the colorectal malignancies, sometimes from the stomach, small intestine, melanomas, just go to the liver and to metastasis. The lung cancers, they also cause metastasis to the liver in addition to the malignancies of the upper aerodigestive tract. But colorectal malignancies, and here the bleeding per rectum is an important clue given in the question. So the most important and the most likely answer would be option number four, metastasis liver. Now moving on to the next question. An elderly male presented with generalized bone pains and aches, ESR elevated, increased serum calcium level, plasma cell labeling index also elevated, Plasma cells, 34% of all nucleated cells having renal insufficiency, sickle radiograph is shown. Now, pretty simple question. Too many clues given. I would not expect a standard examiner to give you so many clues. Now, as far as this question is concerned, what comes to my mind is a plasma cell dyscrasia, multiple myeloma. And multiple myeloma you must be well aware about the theory of multiple myeloma. Characteristic features, normal stick normal chromic anemia, Benz-Jones proteinuria, increased calcium level or hypercalcemia, punched out lithic lesions, especially in the vertebra, skull, and long bones. Characteristically, ASR elevated. Bone pains, typical feature. Hyperviscosity syndrome, sure, in many of the cases. Now, in addition to that, they land up in renal insufficiency, increased blood urea, serum creatinine. Now, amyloidosis can be a late complication. These are some of the important facts about multiple myeloma. And over here, you have got the options like lateral CV disease, histiocytosis X. They will usually be present in a pediatric age group, not in an elderly age group. Hodgkin's disease non-Hodgkin's and Hodgkin's lymphoma, they will be characteristically associated with lymph nodes and punched out defects as you can well see in the skull radiograph. They are a feature of multiple myeloma. Out of these four options which are mentioned over here, multiple myeloma is the most specific answer. So you have to arrive 
at a diagnosis by having a look at the question, concentrating at the question and then also having a look at the figures because basically in eventually these are combined questions which test your ability to arrive at a diagnosis after reading the question as well as having a look at the CT, MRI, radiograph or the image which is given in the figure. So you have to be pretty sure about the things, both of them, theory as well as practical. So this is very important what you see in war drones and that is why importance of war drones cannot be underestimated. You see a clinical case once and you would never forget it in your lifetime. Now having a look at question, another question which we go down. Now below is, a, is shown a figure demonstrating focomelia. The drug implicated in causing focomelia is. Now there are four options given. I think that focomelia, amelia, this is a clinical condition which has been associated with the tarotitin used in the past for motion sickness and given to pregnant females in the form of thalidomide. Question very frequently asked. Thalidomide is a very old drug and it was banned for a long period of time. Now thalidomide has found a use in many conditions recently but here the question specifically points to a defect which you can see in the figure that the newborn uh, most likely is having absence or malformed limbs and this is a characteristic teratogen effect of thalidomide. So thalidomide is a potent teratogen and in addition to that you have to remember other teratogens like warfarin, like hydrantoin, like alcohol, like smoking, like hypervitaminosis A, like hypervitaminosis D, like the radiations which can cause deleterious effect on the fetus especially at the period in embryology called as organogenesis which is usually in the range of three weeks. So at this point of time many of the drugs are contraindicated in a pregnant female because the long-term effects of using these drugs can be devastating and they can cause deformities like fetal hydrantoin syndrome, fetal warfarin syndrome, fetal alcohol syndrome and here specifically as far as this drug is concerned Focomelia or Emilia. Moving to the next question. <coughs> now here we have got a 45 year old patient with a rash on skin and pain in hands has a characteristic pencil in cup deformity and it is seen in options mentioned now I will not go to the options because my simple basic understanding of medical sciences especially my knowledge of medicine and dermatology would suggest over here pencil in cup deformity this is a typical term which is used and this is usually associated with a dermatological condition known as psoriasis and psoriasis is a dermatological condition in which we can have silvery scales on the skin especially on the extensor aspects of our limbs and the body and the condition can be chronic and the drugs used like calcipotrain, previously coal tar and now new monoclonal antibodies but over here I'm not concerned about that fact you have to recognize the radiological feature which is shown what is pencil in cup deformity is the destruction of the distal ends of the phalanges as is well shown in the figure the destruction of the distal end ends of the phalanges the digits or the toes is characteristically given the name as pencil in cup deformity and as far as the arthritis of psoriasis is concerned which we give the name as psoriatic arthritis it is asymmetric oligoarthritis and the sausage digits are very important associations and there can be sacroiliacs as well so over here the question itself mentions rash on the skin and most likely it is a psoriatic rash and the pencil in cup deformity is typical of psoriasis so these points
these points you have to remember and uh, I have mentioned points other than what is written in the question or given in the figure so basic aim is to know and understand what the question is about what the examiner wants us to know these are questions I have picked up because they involve a lot of concept and I have here put in more clues in the questions so that these become very easy for you to answer but you can expect much tougher questions in your examinations I hope that this is enough for today and I will be taking up some of the important questions ahead as well best of luck